Hi everyone, I thought I would come on today to have a little chat with you about Babington Horse Trials because I'm sure that you probably would have already guessed from my Instagram and my Facebook page but I did, I shot Babington Horse Trials as a press photographer on Saturday. Last year I was also a press photographer and I just photographed the, I did, I did most of it, I just did Friday, Saturday, Sunday which was dressage, cross country and show jumping. However, this year with deadline being the day before, I decided to just do cross country. So I have just sat and edited what I have from it. And I really found that I was a shoddy YouTuber that day. I mean, I don't, I can't even take that title. I filmed rubbish. I just, I've got about six clips that I managed to film. Two are out of focus, one is really jolty because when I'm there I went this year primarily as a photographer and I feel I really struggle personally to go between stills and moving image like being a photographer and a videographer so I just went out on course with just my phone and that was another issue of it. I took my lovely Canon G7X out on to go with me but when I got there I was just taken back by the weather all, all the whole run up the weather had said it's going to be cloudy like 15 16 degrees like fantastic I'm gonna take my coat got loads of pockets and stuff for batteries a spare sd card snacks a water bottle because once you're out you tend to be out and you don't come back you don't come back for a lunch break you just stay out on course the entire day that's what i'd learned from last year so when i got there this year and there was no option of a jacket because it was boiling i was like oh god i'm gonna have to minimize whatever i take out on course so this year i ended up taking a battery for each camera so this year i shot on a nikon d750 with a 24 to 70 lens on it and then a canon G my 5d mark 4 which is my friend jess's with a 70 to 200 f 2.8 so i took a battery for both of those i took a naked cereal bar my phone and then within my phone i had my debit card some cash and that's where I put my spare SD card so I didn't even take a water bottle out on course with me so this year we were all about the minimalism so everything that I filmed I ended up filming on my phone which I mean isn't too bad it shoots 4k but equally it's not like the cam like the camera like a Canon G7X it can stand up on its front and film whereas obviously an iPhone it can't stand so whatever I have to do is like rest in the grass which is just pointless but anyway so how I'm going to do this is that I have made a little montage out of the shots I've got and I'm going to talk you through my day at, Bob at Badminton Horse Trials and then I'm going to show you some of my favourite shots that I took from the day at the end of the video. So to start the day off I started photographing at the lake. Uh, the lake is one of Badminton's most iconic places to photograph. You know you have the big drop coming into the water so it catches a lot of riders out and then you've got the big shot over the Mitsubishi cars. So this is where I started my day off. This is also where we had a drone flying, which for me was quite cool because I have a drone. Um, I think they were flying an Inspire and I think it was run by the BBC. So they flew the drone from one end of the lake, followed the riders up and then sh filmed obviously going through the lake combination and then back out. So that is where I started my day. After the lake, I then moved on to Vicarage V. I actually went to the other end of the lake and did some shots. And then I went back to the other end and I went to Vicarage V from that. That is an awesome jump. So where I spent the rest of the afternoon was at Fence 17, I think is what it was. Uh, fence 17 was a group of three hanging logs up to quite a mighty fence. And if I'm honest, it was such a nice fence to photograph. The horses were all jumping it really well. No refusals, no accidents. Because as lovely as that is, like, as not as lovely as it is, as as dramatic as it is to take those pictures I really don't like seeing them I don't like posting them I don't like seeing haunt pictures where riders have made a mistake or horses have made a mistake so it was really nice just to have clean whistles through there so I sat there for pretty much the whole afternoon this is where I got to see my sponsor Ellie it was Ellie's birthday the day after badminton I think it was and she turned 16 so happy birthday Ellie it was lovely to catch up with them on the course and I'll insert the picture that we took of us because with it being so hot I had to buy a hat in fact I have the hat here um I had to buy this lovely oh, hat from Musto um literally as I was walking to the course I had to buy that because otherwise I would have sunburnt my little face so Ellie found me at the side of the course looking 
a bit funny. So after that, I just, I'd stay there for the entire afternoon until the last ride went because I found that last year I just tried to do every single fence and it does not work at Badminton. The course is 4.7 miles long. You cannot get in between jumps without going to miss a few rides and I didn't really want to do that. So I stuck at one fence for pretty much the entire afternoon in the sunshine, which was gorgeous. So I picked up this gorgeous Mackenzie and George key ring whilst I was there. And that was £29, I think, as a show offer. And I've been after all of those for such a long time and they're so nice. And actually the Mackenzie and George team just actually, they sat and made it whilst I waited for it, which was lovely to see. It's nice to to like sort of see the craft behind the product and the whole team there are lovely. I also met Emily Mumford from Ink Pot and Press whilst I was there and she is fantastic as well. So I did that, I also bought some brownies, which I have to say aren't that impressive. I have parents that are professional bakers, so for me there's a very, very high standard set there. So after that I sort of just browsed the shops, I went around like Fairfax and Favour and Rydell and Jules and all those sort of shops. So after that I just sort of headed home. I had a lovely drive home, as lovely as the M25 can be. We are going through the Gloucestershire scenery, it was just fantastic. I've always said that I love Suffolk where I live and I've never found anywhere like it. However, Gloucester is pretty damn near. So I shall now insert some of my pictures from Badminton and I really hope you like them. Um, thank you very much for watching and I hope you liked this sort of different approach to Badminton and having me talk you through it. If you would like some more technical videos on how I shot Badminton, like about like the camera technicalities, like angles, shutter speeds, what fences I shot from, then please do let me know in the comments and I will definitely film you, th um, I will film you one of those. <laughs> thank you for watching, bye. Mm -hmm.